So far away, Lucas, and lovely audience at home, welcome to another episode of Wiki Weekends, a series where I, your host for this one, Carl Smallwood, will scour the lengths and breadths of the internet for a wiki on a subject I'm interested in to talk about it with my good friend, Lucas Holland. Hello there. And today, Lucas, we're talking about one of those cartoons that I just... I went back and I rewatched a few episodes like, man, this show was so good. Why is it so good? So let's talk about it. And that cartoon is Johnny Bravo. One, two, three, yeah! Baby! So far away, Lucas, what are your thoughts on Mr. Jonathan Bravo? I remember enjoying it as a kid, but I haven't seen it since. It was always one of those shows that was on during those weird periods where you'd see things like cow and chicken as well. Yeah, there was like a period in like the 2000s where just Cartoon Networks decided to get just real weird with it. Mm -hmm. And it was characterized by just bizarre concepts and even more bizarre art styles like cow and chicken might be one of the most bizarre primetime cartoons that i can remember where well what's the plot well it's a cow and a chicken their brother and sister and their parents are sentient legs mama had a chicken mama had a cow dad was proud he didn't care how And the yeah. primary villain is a guy with a giant red ass who walks around on his ass. Hola! Anyone here? Speaker L. Astanula. Oh, I'm so sorry, but I do not understand this thing you are saying. Bye-bye now. And then, obviously, way weirder than Cow and Chicken even, Courage the Cowardly Dog. Courage the Cowardly Dog, which is, like, borderline experimental. Mm-hmm. And Courage the Cowardly Dog is another show that I'd like to talk about one day, but I will mention the popular... Well, it's not even a fan theory. It's like it's pretty much just confirmed in the text that none of the crazy, wacky creatures that appear in Courage the Cowardly Dog are real. It's just... That's the perspective of Courage, because he's a small dog, and he doesn't really mm-hmm. go out much, so it's not like he lives on like a farm in the middle of nowhere. It's just that he's never ventured beyond the confines of his farm. So that's how he sees the outside world, and it's like... That's why Muriel doesn't respond to any of the monsters in any way that would seem realistic, because they're not monsters, they're just people, and Courage has seen them as monsters because he's a nervous, skittish dog. Return the slab. Ha! Nice try, Professor. Yeah, it's literally just personified anxiety, isn't it? Which is why Courage the Cowardly Dog is like, you know, such a great show to watch, but again, just borderline experimental with some of like, the weird stuff they put in. Yeah, and then you've just got Johnny Bravo, which is a bit more normal compared to those two. But but also, if, still... yeah, break down the concept, though, of what Johnny Bravo is. And keep in mind, this is a kid's show. It's like, okay, he's a guy who all he wants to do is get laid. It's like, okay. And his best friend is a five-year-old. What? And he lives with his mum. Okay, you've lost me. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome to the island of beautiful men. I can already tell you're going to feel right at home here. Son, you look like you could use a refresher. We were all about to take a swim. I've got an extra swimsuit if you'd care to join us. Yeah, and I I kind of read nowadays Johnny Bravo as the guy who's like just out of high school but wants to pretend like he's a 30 plus year old man. You know what, we'll find out how old he is, Lucas, because today we're referring to the Johnny Bravo wiki. Which opens with, Johnny Bravo is the titular protagonist of the series of the same name. He's a shallow, boorish, and dim-witted man, uh, which leads to an incorrigible inability to attract women, as well as getting beaten up by them or just about anyone he encounters, which becomes a running gag throughout the series, which is the thing, right, of he acts like an arse to every woman he meets, and the response is they just beat him up. Yeah, but again, what a strange thing to have as, like, the concept for a kid's cartoon is just... Man skeeving on women and getting beaten up. Sugar nip. It's a man who has negative riz. Yes. He's like, he's got a charisma stat of negative one. It is 
unbelievable how bad with women Johnny Bravo is. And we have some basic biographical information about him here, Lucas. So, he's also known as Johnny B, JB, the weird guy. That's when he's like, when NASA apparently talks to him because yeah, he goes to space in one episode. <laughs> and then Jenny Bravo as a woman. And that's like one of the best episodes of the show is where he gets gender swapped. Oh, man. Well, at least I sound right in my head. But what about... <laughs> oh, yeah. I still got it. He gets to experience oh. life as a woman and he realizes, man, just all these guys hitting on me, this kind of sucks. I I, I, yeah. fe I feel sorry for my female brethren, but then it being a cartoon, he immediately switches back to his default personality when that change um, uh, is reverted. Chicks are for looking hot. Lesson learned. Now bring back my body to me. Maybe that's not the lesson. Of course, yeah. Just men not learning the lesson. Which is just like, you know, such a Johnny Bravo thing. And we have here his age, Lucas, is in his 20s. He doesn't clarify any more than that, but he is a man in his 20s who still lives at home. And then his height is six foot tall, although he's 6'3 with his hair. And we can't not mention his hair, Lucas. So, at what age were you when you realised that Johnny Bravo doesn't have, like, the Paul Phoenix eraser head haircut and that is instead a stylized pompadour? Right now? Oh, oh! you don't know? Do you know? <laughs> like, when you look at Johnny Bravo, it looks like he's got, like, the Paul Phoenix, like, eraser head, right? Yeah, it does. He said, no, he's, because he's based on, like, 1950s biker stereotypes. Do you like a greaser? Right. That's why he's got yeah. the sunglasses, the t-shirt, the black t-shirt with the rolled up sleeves and the tight jeans. It's a, it's a overly stylized pompadour. But it's just ridiculously sized. Taken to its logical extreme, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, that does make more sense than it fits with the rest of his vibe a bit better. Yeah, yeah I just, like, well, for years I just thought, oh, it's like Paul Phoenix's haircut. It's like, no, it's just a massive quiff. Yeah, I just thought, yeah, he, he, his favourite two games were like Tekken and Street Fighter and he just admired Guile and, <laughs> and Paul Phoenix. I'm just on another level. So what we mentions here, we have a section on his appearance. So Johnny wears a black t-shirt with sleeves rolled. I just realised, I have a black t-shirt. I probably should have worn a black t-shirt and sunglasses for this episode, right? You Give me a sec. Done. I've got. I'm gonna go put that t-shirt on. I've got a black t-shirt somewhere. I just realised. Yeah, I do have. You know, a plain black t-shirt and a pair of sunglasses. So I guess I can go for the full Johnny Bravo, and I can like try and get the the overly stylized quip if that works. If you can manage to get three extra inches out of your hair, I'll be impressed. Which is fair, it's long enough, right? It, it, wait, wait. Does that work? I don't think I can get the full, like, three inches. Then again, I'm no. six foot three in real life, so I'm as tall as Johnny Bravo is with his hair. And, oh, God, my glasses steaming because it's so warm in my house. But Johnny Bravo wears a black T-shirt with sleeves rolled up, light blue jeans, black loafer shoes, gelled up, bushy blonde hair, and his signature sun glasses. He has very muscular build, he's often exaggerated in size, as seen in Bravo Scooby-Doo. An endless bummer, Johnny has black dotted eyes, similar to other humans. That's where you get one of my favourite Scooby-Doo jokes, it's the crossover with Johnny Bravo. Where like, mm. Velma drops her glasses and Johnny Bravo drops his and Velma's like, <laughs> My glasses, my glasses, I can't see without my glasses. And Johnny Bravo's like, My glasses, my glasses, I can't be seen without my glasses and I can't do the voice. My glasses, I can't see without my glasses. My glasses. I can't be seen without my glasses. Jankies! Everything is dark! I've gone blind! And I also can't see, so... Whew! Don't know how you deal with like, wearing glasses all the time, mate. Whew! Mm. And then we have... It's to... just uh, natural. And then his weight is 245 pounds. Like, what a beef of a man. He's a beef cake, right? He is, and I, I, I do always see it as that kind of way of he's in his head the type of man that a woman wants, of just big, huge, jacked man with tiny baby legs that he clearly never works out. Yeah, you know, like and Johnny then, Bravo skips leg day every day. Every day, and just, oh, you know, overly confident, overly masculine, and just doesn't realise that that's not actually what women want. No, they kind of want a guy who respects them. And the thing is, there probably are mm. women out there who'd be attracted to that type of man. And one of the things I appreciated about the Johnny Bravo show when I was re-watching it is that none of the women in it 
uh, portrayed as like one dimensional characters, which is impressive considering there are some live action like pieces of media aimed at adults where they can't seem to create women characters who have a rounded personality. Cute jacket. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> ow. <laughs> oh, ow. Did Joey tell you to say that? You guys are too much. Is this show created and written by women? Uh, because I, it feels like it. I'm pretty sure one of the people who helped create it was Seth MacFarlane. Who doesn't no. exactly have the best track record for, like, you know, portrayals of women? No. In the stuff that he creates. Meryl Streep, we saw your boobs in Silkwood. Naomi Watts in Mulholland Drive. It's like, it's an anomaly. Because, like, if you when you, like, remember the, the overall plot in your head, it's like, oh, is it going to be cringy when you go back and watch it? It's like... No, because Johnny Bravo is near universally portrayed as the bad guy, and mm -hmm. every woman he approaches is a woman who has like agency and personality, and expresses very vehemently, I do not like this, go away. Until then, not a woman here could vote no matter what age, but the 19th Amendment struck down that restrictive rule. Why they go and do that? I didn't think chicks liked to vote. It feels like a piece of media created to teach young people how to not approach women. Yeah, because that's the thing, like, just... <laughs> if you want to approach a woman, just do the opposite of anything Johnny Bravo does. And you're Basically, probably going to yeah. be in good step, right? But he mentions here that he has friends, and this is the, the weird part. His friends are little Susie, like the eight-year-old who lives next door, Pops, mm -hmm. the old man who runs, like, the 50s-style diner, and then Carl. Who does kind of look more like me than I like Johnny Bravo because he's got like the brown hair and the the, the big spec. He's like the the atypical nerd. Carl, oh no, Carl's dead, and my fingerprints are all over the dribble glass. I do not remember Carl from Johnny Bravo. You can search for him now. And it mentions that he's voiced by one Jeff Bennett impersonating Elvis Presley. If it didn't, like, you know, already lend credence to the fact that, like, you know, Johnny Bravo is, like, a 50s greaser um, uh, mm -hmm. stereotype, he also talks like Elvis. It has changed some. The music itself has changed. It, it, it progressed quite a bit, I, I think. It's better. Uh, I think it's getting better all the time, you know. And the Elvis influences on his design and characterization are easy to spot when you know to look for them. But it does make me wonder why he never had black hair. And I guess it's something to do with, like, because he's a cartoon character, and they wanted him to have, like, an easily defined, like, design and silhouette. Yeah, I think it is probably just character design-wise. It mm -hmm. stands out better against the if had, like, black sunglasses, black shirt combo. Yeah. And then, Lucas, we have here a section on personality. Because believe it or not, Johnny Bravo has a personality. It's just not a very good one. Hello, 911 emergency. There's a handsome guy in my house. Oh, <laughs> wait a second. Cancel that. It's only me. Personality-wise, Johnny Bravo is an extremely dim-witted, ill-mannered, and inconsiderate beefcake. And here's the thing. With a few tweaks, Johnny Bravo could be a perfect example of the himbo. And how familiar are you with the term himbo, Lucas? Uh, as somebody who plays Tears of the Kingdom, I'm quite familiar with the term himbo. Yeah, so himbo is the word like that's been invented in the last couple of years to describe huge buff men who are basically like golden retrievers. It's like, yeah, just... A bit dim-witted and uh, well-meaning, just yes. running around enjoying life. And that's the thing, well-meaning is, um, uh, like, you know, the, the operative word in that sentence. It's like, they eschew the, like, the stereotypes of, like, the huge buff gym bro by just being very, very nice, if a little, like, you know, dim-witted, as you said. Mm -hmm. And Johnny Bravo does fit that, to that stereotype, save for the fact that he just doesn't respect women. And it's not, I don't think it's that he doesn't respect women. It's just that he's such an idiot, he doesn't know how to approach them. He, he's just generally that socially awkward. I do read it as that he doesn't respect women, because if he respected women, he would care enough to like actually learn how to talk to women, right? But I think he doesn't respect anyone, because it mentions here, it continues, he's very full of himself, constantly checking mirrors and flexing his muscles when in front of women. During a conversation with women, Johnny will always try to find a way to turn the conversation around so that they are talking about him. Although the effort to do this exemplifies him as a narcissist. Johnny also naively and faultily believes that all women want him, even when they express the fact that they are uninterested. Because of this, Johnny has the courage to talk to any woman without hesitation. And that's the thing, mm -hmm. you've got to respect his confidence, you just don't, I just don't respect his methods. 
He, like, so he, mean, he has big golden retriever energy. What's wrong, Private? Are you experiencing some discomfort? Oh, do you want your mama? Mama? Where? Mama, help! I'm trapped in boot camp! I, I don't read it as golden retriever energy. He's not well-meaning enough to be golden retriever. That's the problem. Like, there's some flex out because he loves his mum. He greatly cares about his mum. He's very protective. Mm -hmm. He has seemingly, like, very innocent interests. Like, he likes just watching, like, action movies and his best friends with Donny Osmond. Who's just, like, actually in the universe of Johnny Bravo as Donny Osmond. Oh, right. <laughs> so, tell me again why you want the job, Mr. Donny Osmond? Well, shoot. I just love kids. I'm a grown man. That's again. Who is this for? This show made in the 2000s for kids like, oh yes, guest star Donny Osmond. You're like, wait, what? Is it not a 90s show? It's 90s, 2000s, right? It's like that period yeah. of my life is just, I was, I was young. It's all a blur. That's the thing, right? It's just anything before I was like 12, I'm not quite sure when it came out and when I watched it and things like that. Yeah. It mentions here that Johnny also has no sense of personal space, often rushing at women and bending them backwards while flirting with them, causing most of them to hit him out of disgust. He even occasionally flirts with women who are already in a relationship, going as far to suggest cheating without any fear of repercussions. Wow, not even the classic of, oh, don't worry about him, get rid of him, I'll treat you right. Just, oh no, you can cheat on me, it's fine. The thing is though, Johnny would not treat you right. I think like if, well, if a girl said to Johnny, Okay, sure, let's go. He wouldn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. He's like, I've never got this far. It's um, it's that bit <laughs> where it's like the Joker in the Dark Knight saying, like, oh, I'm like a dog trying to catch a car, and if I did, I didn't know what to do. It's like, that feels like the, the typical Johnny Bravo right there of just, he's got zero experience because he spent all of this time just failing to attract any single woman. Exactly, yes. Another attribute Johnny possesses is extreme determination, going through many tasks, even life-threatening ones, to win a girl's heart, though this most often results in failure. These failures are due to Johnny's incompetence and his belief that good looks and macho actions are enough to win one's heart. And that's the thing. It's part of the, it's part of the equation, but it's not the whole, it's not the whole package, even though he thinks they no. is. Oh, check the pets. <laughs> oh, man, I'm pretty. He mentions, speaking of which, Johnny is presented to be not too intelligent, totally lacking in common sense and general knowledge. He can also be interpreted as a male representation of the dumb blonde stereotype, which is interesting, right? He's an inversion of that because every woman on the show is portrayed as being highly competent, very intelligent, with like a well-rounded personality and interests outside of simply dating a man. Whereas Johnny, he's single-mindedly obsessed with the one go. Mm -hmm. Like he's just like he is the inversion of the dumb blonde stereotype. Which is a fun way of looking at it. Well, Mr. Bravo, I guess that leaves us with the kitchen. Come on. Why do I have to get stuck with Jughead? And obviously, I know that people would say, "Oh, but that's the term like bimbo, right?" And then himbo. So why is he not a himbo? And it's like, there generally seems to be a bit more of an air of. Like, as we say, well-meaningness behind the term himbo. It's not just the dumb aspect. It's like, when I think of himbo, and people are thinking, like, okay, but I'm having trouble picturing what you mean by a himbo. Um, like, Modern Family is a good example. Like, in the latest scenes where Alex dates that firefighter. Where he's shown as being not too emotionally intelligent, but he's a well-meaning, nice guy. Mm -hmm. So, Bill, you are... A firefighter? Yeah, uh, my three favorite things are helping people, sliding down poles, and hanging off trucks. So I figured, might as well make a career out of it. And he just so happens to be like super ripped and a fireman. And that's like kind of the joke with a himbo character of, you expect someone who has that body type to be, you, well, they, the, the general stereotype is they're unintelligent, but also they're unintelligent in a way that comes across as like crass and insincere. It's like, no, they do mean the, their best. They do mean mm -hmm. well. Oh, 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 he did it! He cheers for the scrawny yeah. guy! Yeah. 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 Sorry, my fucking Google phone just started like talking to me and scared the shit out of me. 
And here we go, Lucas. And this is why I think, like, you know, Johnny Bravo is an interesting character. Because in the episode, Fruity and Dip, after having numerous nightmares about a monster, Johnny gets a costly therapy session from Susie to find the root of the issue. Quickly, he reveals his biggest insecurities, albeit in a comedic fashion. So Susie asks him, why are you so afraid, Johnny? And he says, well, I'm afraid to love. So when people get too close, I push them away and, ah, talking dog! She's talking to a dog. Susie, dolls sometimes help us say things we can't say ourselves. Here, try it. Johnny, well, all right, talking through the doll. Poor Johnny, he's alone and has problems with intimacy. Johnny to the doll, quiet, don't tell her that. Which <laughs> does make you feel sorry for him, right? But you feel sorry for him then, it's like, but you are an ass. You've done it! You've uncovered the root of my fears! <laughs> How can I ever repay you? That'll be $130. He tried to get therapy, which should be commended, but he didn't stick with it because he's confined to the world of a cartoon where he's never allowed to grow as a character. Otherwise, the same jokes they keep telling wouldn't work. Yeah, and that is just the thing, though, isn't it? Of You feel sorry for him until the moment that he goes and talks to a regular woman again and just starts hitting on them in a horrible way. Yeah, and it mentions here he has powers and abilities, Lucas. So do you want to hazard a guess of the powers and abilities of Johnny Bravo? I'm going to guess that one of them something to do with muscle flexing. Yeah, so the character is memorable for his incredibly fast movements. Usually done while trying to impress him. That's where you go, whoa, 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 which is admittedly <laughs> very impressive. Mm -hmm. And they are accompanied by the loud crack of a whip sound effect. And people don't know the crack of a whip is actually a miniature sonic boom as the end of the whip just snaps the air. Which means, Which Johnny, means Bravo Johnny Bravo might be moving at the speed of sound. Do the monkey with me! Faster than the speed of sound, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Which is like, you know, think of that. Like, Johnny Bravo, if we want to power scale Johnny Bravo, he can move faster than the speed of sound. Which means he could probably, like, dodge a bullet. And not to mention all the yeah, time he gets beaten up and mauled by animals. And he walks that shit off. Next, I will attack using the mail sorting slap of doom. <laughs> Finally, I must smother my foe as a Kaiser roll smothers a quarter pound of juicy hot pastrami. He's got a durability factor as well. Yeah, he says here that Johnny Bravo, despite often getting beaten up in a humorous fashion, never experiences any long lasting or serious injuries as a result, which may have a result of his large physique. Which, that's the thing, he is very, very strong. It's just mm -hmm. that he's an idiot. And lets his guard down a lot. It's like, it reminds me a little bit of like Hercule during like Dragon Ball, where Hercule becomes a mm. joke. It's like, well, he's the strongest man on earth. It's just that his daughter is dating the second strongest person in the universe. <laughs> like, he is legitimately very strong. Like, he punches through that double decker bus and can rip like eight phone books in half in one go. <laughs> He's just like, compared to yeah. like, Goku, he's nothing. Compared to anyone that is a Z fighter or anything, he is laughable, but compared to every single other martial artist basically on the planet, yeah, well, it's like he's that. incredibly strong. It's like the episode, isn't it, where like, he's with Boo and they shoot the dog and mm -hmm. Hercule like, disarms three gunmen and moves faster than the bullets because like he just yeah. disappears. He basically got instant transmission because compared to a regular human... He is that strong. It's just that you never see him talking to or competing as a regular human, except for like in that one episode. <laughs> you traitor. Prepare to die. <laughs> the rest of the mm -hmm. time, like, you see him in comparison to Goku, who is, like, you know, a universal threat. Like, he did genuinely win the World Martial Arts Tournament. It was just when none of the Z fighters bothered to turn up that time. And he's like with Johnny Bravo, he is legitimately very, very strong. It's just that it turns out that every woman in his universe knows Kung Fu. Mm hmm Lucas, he even has an ability that makes him ridiculously powerful, at least in terms of, like, you know, comic characters. He has the ability to break the fourth wall. Of course he does, Often yes. looking directly towards the camera and expressing his disappointment with being unable to woo a lady. Hey there, baby. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. Hmm. So he can move faster than, you know, sound. He's super strong, super durable, and has fourth wall breaking abilities. He could probably beat up Deadpool. I mean, not quite, because Deadpool <laughs> can also, you know, 
<laughs> do all this extra well, bullshit. Well, the thing but... is, it does conform to cartoon logic, and cartoon logic mm -hmm. does normally trump um, uh, comic logic. Yeah, he's just not got. Uh, as far as I can remember, he's not got any extreme examples of cartoon logic, unlike when SpongeBob SquarePants takes like the all of the universe apart. First, I will evade his blows by using the movements Hama taught me to adjust his TV antenna. <laughs> Huh? And we have here, finally, his relationship with women. Despite Johnny's many failed romantic pursuits, a few women did actually show an interest in Johnny and some even pursued a relationship with him. However, many of these relationships either ended due to a misunderstanding, interference by a third party, or Johnny himself ending it for one reason or another. Johnny has also attracted mm. the attention of some rather strange females who have shown an interest in him, but who Johnny found awkward to be with for one reason or another. And I think it was like episodes where he goes like alien planets and alien women are like, look at this wonderful man. <laughs> May I help you, sir? Table for two, please. There's even been like anthropomorphic animals or even monsters showing that Johnny has a very weird form of animal magnetism. That's the thing, he just needs to broaden his sexual horizons and maybe oh, he'd finally get laid. Mr. Bravo, I'd like to introduce you to your wife, Becky. Because he's like, you know what? I'm sure there's someone out there who would love to get it on with a monster lady. I mean, yeah, yeah. Let us know in the comments if that's you. I think she likes you, lad. Mm. No, really. That's okay. You can go back to the lake now. I'm serious. Mentions here that Johnny has a seemingly higher than average success rate when specifically flirting with single mums. <laughs> <laughs> just apparently single mums and random monster ladies just can't get enough of the Johnny. Oh, like that's that's the thing. He's just appealing to the wrong demographic. He needs to be a toy boy. He wants. To, like, he should be a toy boy. Like he needs to be that rebound fling for the single moms. <laughs> Mama warned me about women like you. I was hoping she was right. And finally, we have some trivia here. Johnny's mannerisms towards women appear to bear some similarity to Elvis Presley's characters such as Lucky Jackson in Viva Las Vegas. Jackson himself would get shoved into a swimming pool after poorly flirting with a woman and calling himself hard to resist. I said the lady loves me. Two of Johnny's favourite shows are Nunchuck Chicks and Kung Fu Bay Watching Chicks, which both sound amazing. <laughs> I would watch them both. <laughs> Curiously, the majority of Johnny's mutual love interests have all been redheads, which means that he shares a similarity with Cyclops. Who, for some when we talked about oh, how yeah. Cyclops can't stop attracting redheaded women who can read his mind. And then he cheats on said redheaded women who can read his mind. It's like, what are you doing? I still, and minor spoilers for X-Men 97, I guess, is just when Jean Grey's like, I can't believe you cheated on me with me. How dare you? And he's like, I did. Who could tell the difference? <laughs> it was you. Uh, it mentions here that Johnny Bravo hates clowns, which, you know, makes him relatable. I, I, I get it. Yeah. In the scrapped Season 2 Bible, partly written by Seth MacFarlane, it is revealed that Johnny's first car was the one he crashed in the Season 1 interstitial short. I just can't get over the fact that Seth MacFarlane's involved because it's ahead of its time and respects women and it doesn't sound like a Seth MacFarlane It really project. doesn't, does it? No. <laughs> How did he regress in terms of what his like, um, uh, creative output was? Johnny often tells others, usually women, random facts about himself, such as he once had a salamander or fish live in his mouth for a long amount of time. Oh my god. Do you think that'd work? Lady, would that work? If a guy came up to him and said, I had a fish live in my mouth once. Or just if he opens his mouth and a salamander pops out, just what, what do you do in that scenario? Just how, does, how do the logistics of keeping a salamander in your mouth even work? I don't know. I think as well, the fact he thought that a work as a brag on a woman is very impressive. <laughs> but yeah, that is um, uh, all we have information-wise about one Mr. Jonathan Bravo. More than anything, this doesn't excuse me to put in clips because like I said I was just a bit hungover over the weekend and I was like, I don't want to watch. I'm just going to watch Johnny Bravo. Because I just saw it and I went, this show is actually pretty good. And it's very surprising how it's weirdly progressive in the sense mm -hmm. that it has female characters who have agency and 
display fierce independence and don't fall for the tricks of the dumbass man. It's like, it is a complete inversion of what you'd expect from that kind of premise. Yeah, it's just absolutely bizarre to me that just, I'm looking up now when it actually aired and 1997 to 2004, I just can't get over the fact that, yeah, there was a show that not only had women turning down this guy, but also the fact that that was the main premise of the show. That's what really strikes me, is you obviously, even in like the Pokemon anime that came out around the same time, Brock was constantly hitting on women and getting turned down, right? But to make that the entire main point of the show is really surprising. And even just the fact that all the women shown on the show have rich internal lives and seemingly have no desire to date a man. Or date a man that doesn't treat them right, like Johnny Bravo. But it's like, you know, what a weird show. But also, what a fun show. And if people are inclined mm -hmm. to agree, you can go continue the discussion myself and Lucas have had today in the Discord found link below. Otherwise, cheers everyone for watching, and I'll see you all next time. One, two, three, go! Baby! <laughs> Assassin! Oh. Check the pets. Man, I'm pretty.